Hello, friends of Oak Hills. This is Pastor Dale coming to you for our weekly video touch point. Today is Thursday, November 3rd, 2002. In our Points to Ponder article, we're coming back to the big story of the Bible, and we are in chapter 9 called Fulfillment. Jesus is the center of the Bible, Jesus is the focus of the Bible, Jesus is the thread that ties the Bible all together. Whether we read the Old Testament or the New Testament, we rightly ask how this passage reveals or speaks about Jesus. This is because the Bible tells the story of God's covenant of redemption. This plan of redemption was established before Genesis 1-1 ever occurred. And the plan of redemption centers on the Redeemer. We cannot read the story of the Bible detached from God's covenant of redemption. So we finally come to Jesus in the big story of the Bible. Even though Jesus has been integrally involved in every chapter so far, chapter 9 of the big story is fulfillment. The gospel writer Matthew keys in on this word when he repeatedly says, this was to fulfill what was written. The Old Testament gives us many promises related to the blessings of God's covenant. All those promises find their yes in Jesus. Chapters 1 through 8 of the big story of the Bible have led to this moment. Jesus says in John 17, 4, that he fulfills the covenant of redemption made with the Father before the foundation of the world. He says there, I glorified you on earth, having accomplished the work that you gave me to do. Then he explains to the two disciples on the road to Emmaus that everything in the Old Testament pointed ahead to him. We read in Luke 24, 27, and beginning with Moses and all the prophets, he interpreted to them and all the scriptures the things concerning himself. Jesus even speaks about fulfillment later in Luke 24 when he says, Everything written about me in the law of Moses and the prophets and the Psalms must be fulfilled. The Apostle Paul strikes on the same theme of fulfillment in his letter to the Galatians. He applies the promise of Genesis 12, 3 to Jesus when he says, And the scripture, foreseeing that God would justify the Gentiles by faith, preached the gospel beforehand to Abraham, saying, In you shall all the nations be blessed. Galatians 3, 8. The Holy Spirit-inspired apostle teaches us to read the Old Testament looking for Jesus. Later in Galatians 3, Paul explains how all the nations are blessed in Jesus. He writes, Christ redeemed us from the curse of the law by becoming a curse for us, so that in Christ Jesus the blessing of Abraham might come to the Gentiles, so that we might receive the promised Spirit through faith. What Paul is saying is that when God promised to bless Abram in Genesis 12, and through Abram to bless all the families of the earth, God was promising that his only son would die for the sins of the world. Jesus would be the satisfaction of God's wrath due our sin. That is the promised blessing of Genesis 12, 3. The gift of the Spirit is confirmation that our sins are forgiven, and we are reconciled to our Heavenly Father. Redemption is accomplished and applied. But I'm getting ahead of myself now. Chapter 10, next week, is called Application, which focuses on how the Spirit applies the work Jesus's Jesus accomplishes, accomplishes. For now, I want us to know that when we read the four Gospels in our Bibles, they are intricately tied to the Old Testament. In fact, the more we understand the story of the Old Testament, the richer our appreciation and wonder will be when we read of Jesus' life, death, and resurrection. We cannot extract Jesus from the big story of the Bible because he is the main character and the central plot line in the entire story. This chapter in the big story, Fulfillment, is the thread that ties the entire story of the Bible into a unity. To touch on a few highlights here in the life of our church, it is a new month, and so with a new month, we have a new missionary of the month, and we are praying for Evan and Holly Shaw. They serve with Sacred Road Ministries in the Pacific Northwest, a ministry to Native American reservations, a reservation, and they've been <clears throat> there in the Pacific Northwest for a couple years now, and the pandemic has extended 
their time in Yakima, Washington, but their intention is to be in Warm Springs, Oregon, a place that we have served and volunteered on trips every summer for the last 12 to 15 years. Now, Evan and Holly are going to be looking for a home in the Warm Springs area by the end of this year and hope to have moved by the springtime to Warm Springs. And so that's their primary prayer request, the number one thing that they're asking for prayer for, uh, that God would provide the right place for them to live, for them to move. They have their little boy and uh, going to be going down to Warm Springs, and it's just a huge step for them to, to initiate that transition. The other thing that we could be praying for, for Evan and Holly and Warm Springs and Sacred Road Ministry is our shoebox gifts. We've been inviting you to participate in providing gifts packed in a shoebox that we will ship out to Washington, and they will take these and they'll bring them to the various kids on the reservations to have a Christmas party, share the, the story of Christmas with these kids and give them these shoebox gifts. And so pray for that ministry. Pray that the, the impact of the gospel would go deep into the hearts of these kids and that seeds would be planted and that fruit would bear, uh, gospel fruit would bear in the, the lives and the souls of these kids on these reservations. And and Evan and Holly, they are focusing on Warm Springs. And so look, our guests are, are blessing that ministry and that impact. So pray for their, their ministry and their connection there. Uh, that's our Missionary of the Month for November, Evan and Holly Shaw. Please be taking time to pray for them. Check out the actual email, Touchpoint, to read more about them. A couple other highlights to touch on. We have a new Sunday school class for adults that started this past Sunday, but you're more than welcome to come on out. At Michael Buckley and Bill Burns are te tag team teaching uh, on a book written by Gregory Beale called Redemptive, Re Re Redemptive Reversals. It's a tongue twister for me, I guess. And it's just looking at the, the beauty of God's redemption, uh, reversing what seems to be the natural course of this world, but God does ironic and re reversals for good for, for us. So it's a, it's a rich class. Something special coming up in November, on November 20th, it's a Sunday, we're going to have a Thanksgiving hymn sing service. It'll be Sunday evening at 6 p.m. at the church, and we love our whole church family together. We will be singing hymns out of a hymnal, and we will be opening it up for people to give public testimony of Thanksgiving, of how God has blessed us and served us and ministered to us in this last year, or even the last couple of years. We We've done this in the past, but it's been a few years since we've had a Thanksgiving service. It is good for the church family to be together and give public testimony to God's goodness. And we want to do that together while singing hymns. We'll have a dessert fellowship afterwards. So mark that on your calendar, Sunday, November 20th at 6 p.m. We'd love for you to be a part of that. Our men have a special gathering coming up on Monday, November 14th. The women have a special gathering coming up. On Thursday, November 10th at Susanna Stagmeyer's house. Check out the, the Touchpoint or the Bulletin this Sunday for more information about that. Our youth and uh, Kid360 kids are going to be serving at Harvesters next Thursday evening, November 10th. There's more information there if you want to be a part of that. It's an opportunity to serve at the food bank. And lastly, this Sunday, I will be completing this very brief short sermon series speaking about money and how we treasure or don't treasure or shouldn't treasure money. And uh, this Sunday, we come to 2 Corinthians chapter 8 and 9, where Paul commends the example of the Macedonians and gives some practical instruction for the church at Corinth. And we're going to glean from that. So we had the treasure principle and the investment principle. And this Sunday, we have the abundance principle or the abounding principle. So I hope you're able to join us then the following Sunday, John will preach from Ecclesiastes, and then November 20th, I will begin a new sermon series on the Old Testament prophet Micah. This will be a brief series, only six weeks. It will carry us through Advent, and what we are doing is looking at Christmas through the eyes of Micah. So that's that's the plan for sermons over the next seven weeks or so. We hope that you're able to join us on Sunday mornings and, and worship, and um, looking forward to being with you. Last thing, it just came to my mind. I mentioned this on Sunday. I mentioned it again. Uh, our Presbytery meets on Friday evening and Saturday morning this week. And I would encourage you to be praying for us and for our brothers. There are nine churches in our Presbytery. Lord willing, we're going to be receiving a, a tenth church, a, 
a church that's transferring from the, the EPC into our, our presbytery. Um, so we're a small presbytery, but it, there's rich fellowship and we work together for the sake of the kingdom. We want to see churches planted in our region. We want to see missionaries sent from our region. So pray for our, our efforts and our work as we seek to be faithful to the, the Great Commission and, and God's call on us. Well, thank you for joining me this day for our weekly Touchpoint. I look forward to seeing you soon. God bless.